And of course it doesn't work. I haven't implemented the function that will make it work yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start by creating sort of a convenience method for what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is I'm making sure the parent matrix is as up-to-date as it possibly can. And I'm going to create a sort of convenience method for doing that. It's going to be public matrix 4f get parent matrix, sure. Actually, let's make it private because I'm not planning to use this anywhere else. So I'm going to move that check into here, and it's going to do that check. It's going to see if it's null or if the parents change. If that's true, then it's going to set it to the. Wait, if, it can see if the parent is not null and it's changed. If that's true, it's going to update it to the most recent parent matrix. Otherwise, it's just going to return the last parent matrix. That's what this check's all about. And Really, I'm j at this point, I can change my get transformation method to use this, so I don't even need to perform that check like I was doing before. There. Whew. And now that we have all that out of the way, I can implement the mechanism. The reason this isn't working is because in my get view projection, I'm just setting this based off the basic camera stuff, the basic camera position, basic camera rotation, basic everything. What I actually want is the transformed position, the position after it's gone for the transformation. And to calculate this, I'm going to have a method, maybe public vector 3f, get transformed position, yeah. I'll just call it get transformed pass. And this, what this is going to do is very something very simple. It's going to return the parent matrix, and it's going to transform dot transform position. Of course, I don't have the transform function yet, but that's what I'm going to need. So let's go ahead and implement that in our lovely matrix class. I'll implement it right above mul. So this is going to be public vector 3f transform. Yeah, transform. Taking in a vector 3f, sure, r, why not? And there. So this is very simple. Return new vector 3f taking in some stuff. <laughs> but the way this works actually is very simple. Remember, how does the matrix work? The top row, that's what the X transformation, the Y transformation, and the Z transformation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take M00 times R dot get X plus M01 times R dot get Y plus M 0, 2, times r dot get z. And that'll be my first parameter. And for the upper two, I'm going to do the same sort of thing, except with different rows of the matrix. So for the y of the transformed vector, it's going to be s almost the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Except... I'm going to align everything. Yeah, almost the same thing, except there are the different rows, 1 and 2. And really, it's that simple. There's That's all it takes to transform the vector. And with that, yeah, we should be able to get the transformed pause. So if I change this to... Yeah, how about I say 3f camera pause equals get transform dot get transformed pass dot mole negative one then I can just change this to camera pass stuff all the camera pass stuff yeah don't need the negative anymore because I'm multiplying by negative one so that's all okay and there that should place it in the position of the new thingy McJiggerton almost sort of not really did I forget to add it? Is that why this isn't working? No? It's definitely in that position. Well, I I don't know why this isn't working at this point. I must have forgotten something. One moment. And I forgot to, well, add in the last part of the matrix, the M03, the third column. And I really don't know why. So let's just add that on. Now we don't need to multiply by anything this time because we don't have a W component in our vector. So it's sort of just assumed to be one, or not one, but well, 
It's just, I'm just implicitly assuming it's one. What you can do is you can take in some float w part, it's like some float source w or something, and then just multiply it by that. I'm not going to do that because I don't th think it's necessary at this point, but you can do that and multiply it by that just to give it something to multiply by. So you have control over how much of the translation you get. And yeah. So now if that... Yeah, look at this. I am in the position... My camera's starting in the position of the, these things. Yeah, look at that. If I... In fact, I'm going to try to like look directly up. I know it's like starting at the corner, so it's going to be hard to see. But yeah, you see? I'm starting at sort of the edge, the corner thing. It's hard to show off, but you know... And this does get really interesting, because my positioning is now moving relative to that object. So, yeah, this is really interesting to control. Actually, I wonder why that is. I'm not sure that should be happening. Hmm. Oh, well. Well, anyways, with that all out of the way, now all I need is the rotation, which should be similar, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure why I thought that would work. <laughs> so let's try this again. But, before I go into that, make sure in your matrix class you have these set to 1 and 2 right here. Because like, for some reason I had these all set to 0, and I really don't know why. That's wrong. Make sure, sure these are 1 and... No, d don't do the draggy thing around. How's it done, anyways? Hmm. Is that how it is? You just... Do that and then drag. Oh, okay. Hmm. When I, well, now I know. But anyways, what I want to do is I want to create the function public quaternion get transformed rotation. And it's going to do something similar to what the get transformed position is doing. But this is going to be a little different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same sort of check I did right here. If parent is not null, and, well, parent has changed, then, first off, I'm going to say quaternion, parent rotation. See where I'm going with this? Which is just going to equal a new quaternion, 0, 0, 0, 1. Which is sort of like the null quaternion. This is, means no rotation. If parent is not equal to null, and the parent has changed, then the parent rotation is going to equal parent dot get transformed rotation there and well at this point I'm just going to return parent rotation multiplied by rotation just like that very well fairly straightforward set parent rotation to the parents transformed rotation so, so yeah just recursively walk up the hierarchy un until it's reached the parent reached the one that's changed. It's reached the final. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh right, that's not going to work because I don't have the giant store. Right, I'm not caching the parent rotation. Okay, never mind. <laughs> if parent is not equal to null, it equals parent dot get transform rotation. There we go. You could have, like, a rotation cache here if you really wanted to. I'm not going to bother because I don't think it's going to be used nearly enough to warrant that. But, you know, it's there. So anyways, I'm going to change this to get transformed rotation, and it should just be that simple. should walk up the hierarchy, get the proper quaternion, and look at that! We're starting in their position, and it makes our camera behave really wonky, because we're trying to rotate around one of the global axes. Left and right should work fine, yeah. But looking up and down, that's a little bit of a different story. So yeah, and the reason for that is because we're basing those calculations off of the actual position and not the transformed stuff. So yeah, if we really want that to be truly generic, what we can do <laughs> is change it to be based on that. Set it to get transformed rotation multiple. Oh wait, that wouldn't work. Never mind. Okay, never mind, it's not that simple. <laughs> okay, so, a couple things. 
First off, to get rotation to work right, all you have to do, change this quaternion right here from from using get transform dot get rotation dot get right as the x axis to get transform rotation dot get right as the x axis, and that'll get rotation to work right at least. It won't fix positioning, and I'm not going to actually fix that just yet, because I want to fix something else. In fact, let's see if I can demonstrate it. Okay, you see I can move the mouse around, getting okay that with that, but if you... Ah, see right there? Directional light, not quite working. And the reason for this? Because we're still setting the main camera dot get position and not get transformed position. So yeah, we're going to want to change that in directional and point and spot. And we might also want to change that in a few other places, like with the point light, we may want to change that to get transform position, but I'm not too terribly worried about that just yet. Okay, fine. It is going to be transform position. I'm going to go ahead and do it before before something terrible happens, and I forget. Okay. So yeah, that's get transform position. And point, going to be get transform position, directional, that everything else looks okay. Ooh, reminds me, for directional. Where's the directional thing? Uh, you know, let's, let's more focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> okay, so now you look at that, and look, no bizarre artifacts. The lights and specularity working out just fine like they should, even if movement is a bit wonky. But what I almost completely forgot about was the directional light. I don't need to specify direction anymore. You know why? Well, because I have that in the rotation. The rotation is the direction. And it's also infinitely more powerful once you include the power of the whole graphing nonsense. Not, not the graphing nonsense. You know what I'm talking about, the rotational thing. So yeah, I'm going to return get transform.get rotation dot get forward. And there, that will get the direction. So don't even need to take that in now. Now I can go back to test game. Wherever I created the directional light, you know, somewhere in here. Aha! And I can change this. So I can say, I don't know. Directional light dot set ro okay, get transform set rotation to new quaternion new vector three f zero one zero sure I'm just gonna rotate around the y axis you know what, let's let's rotate around the x axis sure math dot two radians forty five. There, just to mix it up a bit, just to give us a little bit of a different directional light. Oh, excuse me. Has to be a float. <sighs> and now, should be facing a different direction. Or it could crash. Mm. Ah! Okay. Well, I guess I want to add it to an object first. Guess that makes sense. So I'll do that at the end. I'll worry about making sure that doesn't happen later. Just don't want to just don't want to bother with it right now. Too many other things. Ah, there we go. It, as you see, coming from a different direction, coming from that way, but working just fine, all the same. Now let's really work out this wonky rotation thing. It's just... Or not the rotation. The rotation's working fine. It's just... <laughs> yeah, it's just the forward thing. Forward's moving that way, not forward. So yeah. One moment. Wow! Just wow! This! Oh my word! This bug! 
This has probably been one of the most difficult bugs to track down in ever since I've been programming. Like, my word! It, I'm on day four right now, actually, believe it or not. And I think, I, I'm not going to say I know for sure, but I think I finally tracked it down. Yeah, this is not nearly as simple as it seemed. There's, there's actually like six or seven, I don't know, I'll count when I actually do it, but yeah, there's like six or seven completely independent bugs that are all cumulatively working together to ultimately cause this bizarre camera effect we're seeing. Yeah, that's why this is such a nasty bug to track down. So let's just go ahead and get started and start counting them off. Number one, in directional light. Look at what we're doing in get direction. We're getting it based off the rotation. And that's not good. We want the fully transformed rotation. Otherwise, that's going to run into problems with parenting. So yeah. And same thing in spotlight. It needs to be get transformed rotation, not get rotation. Whew. That's bug number one. Bug number two is in the transform class. It's with our old position, old rotation, old scale, whole system. Because if we're updating it like we are here, well, there's no... <laughs> if I update it here, there's no guarantee that something else won't need to check has changed. If we update it when we... Okay, let me explain it this way. We're walking down the transformation hierarchy. Every time we walk down it, this, this object's updated, all right? Alright, but let's say a child wants to check if it has changed. Well, when it gets to this object, it's not going to notice if this object's changed because we've already updated the old position. So we're going to need to change that. We're going to need a separate function, public void update. And this is where we're going to update old position and perform the if not null check. So yeah, I'm going to move this to update. And I'm also going to move this in here. Except rather than rechecking it, I'm just going to say else. And... Hmm... I wonder... I'm not entirely sure if I can actually set it like this, or if I need to change it a little bit so it won't be positioned yet. But I'll, I'll find out. So yeah. And you notice that simplifies the code a little bit, at least in my opinion. So, I say that's just a win all around. So in game component, I'm going to call the update right above the input. So, we're going to call, yeah, transform.update at the very start. Right when we start the input, that's when we're going to update it. So, yeah. And with that, I, yeah, I think that, that, that covers that. So that's bug number two. We'll find out, again, we'll find if we need to actually change this later. Bug number three. I'm going to add a function to our transform class called rotate. It's going to take in some vector 3f axis and some float angle. And this is going to be just a convenience fu function. It's for things like in our camera where we're rotating. It's going to do this, except it's going to be about a million times easier to actually do because, well, we, we don't need to say get transform .set rotation to get transform .get rotation .mold it, you know, etc, etc. We can just use the rotate function. So we're gonna, I'm gonna set up the rotate function just like this for now. Rotate.mol new quaternion axis angle dot normalized. There. So, I guess I didn't need to copy that, but yeah. This is how we have rotation right now. As it turns out, that's wrong. What I was actually looking for is new, new quaternion angle axis dot mole rotation. And apparently, even though quaternions are non-commutative, as in, you know, multiplication order matters, well, clearly, but apparently, if you're just having one hierarchy level, you don't notice the difference. But when you have multiple levels, you do, which is really weird, but... I found that to be the case. So there's bug number three. Of course, we want to change this to, you know, use the rotate function. But, you know, 
So I'll get transform.rotate, and look how much easier that is. I can just pass in y axis and whatever this is, <laughs> close it off, and just like that, much easier. So now I can delete this, and same thing here. And also this is going to make it easier not to make this sort of mistake later. So you don't have to worry about quaternion order when you rotate. Whew. And wait, what? Oh, never mind. For a second there I thought I copied more than I was supposed to, but no. And... do I... okay. Not entirely sure why this whole thing is surrounded in brackets, but... or parentheses, or whatever. But okay. So yeah, there. That, fi that should fix the rotate thing. Should. Why are you... I still don't have it right? Oh! Right, don't need new quaternion now. Much better. And that, my friends, is bug... That concludes bug number three, I think. And I went ahead and looked off-screen to see whether I did need to change this, and yeah. We're going to want to not set it directly to position, because otherwise it's going to cause issues. So I'm just going to say position.add 0.1f, or how about 1.0f, sure, doesn't matter. Rotation, I'm going to multiply by 0.5f. And scale, I'm going to, sure, add 1.0f. You know, I'm just doing something just to make it different than, well, position, rotation, and scale, so that these things should return true the first time through. Well, you know, because they're not equal. And yeah. So now on to bug number four. And this is where things start getting... Hmm. No, I'll say this is bug number four. This is where things are going to... Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll do it this way. This is going to be bug number four. <laughs> and this is where things start getting into a little bit more of the meat of it. A little bit more into why exactly this has been happening. Right here. Get forward, get back, get up, right, left, all this stuff. As it turns out, I was wrong in assuming that these would... even though these are the rows of the matrices that correspond to the vectors, I was wrong to assume that these would end up actually giving the correct vector. And I'm still not entirely sure why that is. I'll be perfectly honest with you, but I suspect it has something to do with the fact that some rotation matrices will ultimately be the conjugate, because that's what it's doing. It's actually, when it's not working, it's returning the conjugate of the appropriate vector, if that makes it, well, the vector you'd get if you rotated by the conjugate of the rotation, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, I, I suspect it it has something to do with that, I just, I'm not entirely sure what it is. So anyways, to fix this, we're going to need to separate get forward, back, up, down, left, right, and left from the two rotation matrix calculations. So I'm going to say vector 3f forward is going to be equal to, to what I have at, as forward right now. And vector 3f up is going to be equal to what I have as up right now. And vector 3f right all right, new vector 3f, it's going to be equal to what I have right at right now. So now you might be wondering, well, if I don't get the forward... oh, and I want to return a new matrix using the... these forward, up and right, from, well, this. And I might be wondering, well, if the matrix calculation doesn't give me proper forward, right, up, back, down, whatever, vectors, what will? Well, what we want to do is we want to return a new vector 3f of starting in forward on globally, such as on the z-axis, and just rotate it by this. And that's how we're going to actually want to do rotation. So actually, I'm going to set this to zero just so it's easier to copy around. We'll not have to delete the one in all the different places. So yeah, apparently that's the way I should have done it. Again, I'm not completely sure why this will work, and the matrix doesn't always, but, well, I'll figure it out one of these days. I'm interested in the math, so I'm gonna 
Well, I'm gonna do the d derivation or whatnot at some point, but... Or at least do something. I don't know. Point is, this works, and that concludes bug number four. We can't rely on the rotation matrix to give us proper vectors. So, that brings us to bug number five. The camera. Notice our sensitivity is negative right now, and we've been doing all our rotations sort of negatively, backwards, inverted, you know, with the negative sign in front of it. And there's a reason for this. The reason is, well, I ultimately wanted to... Well, the idea was that the camera would do the rotation backwards, so that, you know, kind of like the position. I'm, when I make... When I set the camera pos for the matrix, I'm m multiplying it by negative 1, so that it moves the whole world away from the camera. Kind of the same thing here. I was doing the opposite rotation, so that the world would rotate, you know, in the opposite direction of the camera. Unfortunately, that, function, that sort of method that I'm doing doesn't really stack once you put it in a giant rotation hierarchy. So instead of that, we do want sensitivity to be, sensitivity to be positive, and we want to get that invert first effect by taking the transformed rotation dot conjugate dot two rotation matrix. So, see, this is important. In get view projection, make sure you're getting it from the conjugate, because that way that'll take in, that'll sort of invert the rotation, even including all the inherited rotations. So, yeah. And, well, there, that, that covers that book, I think. I don't know if you want to comment, I don't know if this is bug number six or not, but... When I said get transform rotation here, that was also part of the whole system. So yeah, this actually just needs to be get dot get rotation now, because now it's in camera. Well, now the camera doesn't have to worry about having its rotation inverted with respect to the entire world, because that's already done when I call the conjugate here. And really with that, I'm going to need to invert all the sort of, well, a lot of the rotations here, like... This is going to be negative 45 degrees, so that in the direction light, so it's now it's rotating down at 45 degrees, which is what I was doing originally, it's just now we're explicitly saying that. Our point, or spotlight, it's going to be rotated at 90 degrees. And honestly, I may have fixed all the bugs at this point, so I guess it is 5 or 6, depending on how you want to count. So if I run, this may or may not crash horribly. Okay, appears to be working basically so far, I'm Guess my recorder doesn't like my engine today, but that's okay. So now let's try parenting the camera to test mesh 2. Right? Get ready. Alright. It's facing the direction, so that's fixed. And I can move the camera just fine. So it is indeed parented to the object. It started, well, at the object's position and rotation. But it's not affecting the movement of the camera anymore. And also notice how things are, like, aligned properly. So there you go. That fixes all the bugs. Finally. <laughs> that one's a pretty nasty one to track down, but... Uh, in fact, yeah, I'll leave it parented to test mesh, too. Yeah, that was pr not easy to track down, but hey, I'm glad it's all over now, and I'm glad I can finally say that the whole camera parenting hierarchy does work properly. So yeah. And with that, I bring good news. As of now, there's only one thing left in the engine architecture segment. Materials. After that, after we cover materials, we, we will finally be done shuffling everything around into an organized, powerful format. And then we'll be ready to move on to the resource management section, where we'll handle OBJ loading and... Well, and we'll make proper generic shaders so we don't need our shader classes to have a shader. And yeah, so we're just going to make fully generic materials so they can have any property the programmer wants without needing inheritance. And yeah, so thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you next time.